Hello everyone and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to try and complete the remaining three missions, the, the Kerbald Dres Lander, the Tylo Probe, and the Elu Station. And according to my notes, the correct transfer point for Dres to Kerbin is when Kerbin is negative, one, negative 330 degrees, so that means positive 30 degrees, so 30 degrees ahead. So, eventually, no, actually, uh, Kerbin has to actually lap Drez in order to get to that point. Uh, right, Drez can't catch up to it. Drez is slower. So, Kerbin is going to have to lap Drez. So, that's going to be a fair amount of time. And then we've got the Tylo Probe. That's coming in in 66 days. This is Earth time, by the way. I'm uh, using Kerbin time in in my 1.0 series and it's getting me confused sometimes but there's Earth time uh, so uh, 66 days till dual encounter there and then Elu station is coming in at 140 days so I think the Tylo probe is first let's time warp here and see yep okay so this is gonna come in first let me just focus on the Tylo probe then so again, after we get these missions done, my intention is to attempt to upgrade to 1.0. We won't lose the save or anything. If we need to go back to it in .90, that'll be fine. Uh, so it's not going to be an irreversible sort of situation. But I think it'll work out. Okay, so here we go into the dual system with the intention of landing on Tylo. Okay, so we're coming in the right direction. And since this is 0.90, I can still use KSP error breaking calculator to see if things work out. So let me turn to that quickly. Okay, KSP error breaking calculator says 120,728 meters, which sounds fine to me. And perhaps we can fix inclination a little bit and that's to get our apoapsis at Tylo's orbit. Still won't be perfectly in line with Tylo's I think. But it'll be close and Tylo has a lot of gravity. Yep that'll do. Okay so a very minor adjustment as you can see. Okay and just a real burn to bring it in now since the inclination seems to be alright. That's uh, a little bit closer than what we want. Let me do a quick burn in the opposite direction. Oh, actually, it's deviating so much it's not possible to tell. Let's get closer. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Okay, so let's get within the orbit of the outer, uh, outer moons of Jewel before we fix things. That looks about right. Don't need to worry about re-entry heat. There's Jewel. Number is about right. Okay, let's go. Okay, time to retract solar panels. And retrograde. Okay, mission is oriented properly for Jewel arrow breaking. Here we go. 8,600 meters per second here. Boy, those jewel arrow breaks are going to be interesting in 1.0. Yep. I don't know how probes will survive that very easily. Lots of heat shielding necessary, probably. So that's good. There's a possible approach. Well, not more. Let's see. Possible approach shaping up here. Maybe just a little bit of a fix will do the trick. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. We'll need to fix it. Okay, we are now out of the atmosphere of Jewel. So I'm going to turn around and do a prograde burn in the hope of hitting that that encounter with Tylo again. 
Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, about 400 kilometers seems to be the minimum from here. Okay, here we go. We're going to need some time to do this burn. Going to end up in polar orbit around Tylo. Guess we'll be landing somewhere here. As you can see, it's going to take about 1,400 to really get into a tight orbit. But we've got that. We've got that and more. So that is fine. At least we've brought all the stuff with us. We've got uh, goo containers. We've got Science Junior. Should get a lot of science out of this. Alright, and I will meet you on the other side of this burn. Okay, we are now in orbit around Tylo. We're just bringing the orbit down to a decent level. And then we can probably directly retroburn for descent to some point over here. We certainly want to land in daylight, of course. And so that's an area looks like the area you want. Can't really pick a spot. It's going to take such a long time to retroburn to our our landing, hopefully landing, not crashing, that I can't really pinpoint the place where I think I'm going to end up. It's looking like we had enough fuel in this uh, nuclear stage to do everything, which was intentional. Of course, the poodle stage is meant to begin our descent, which takes a lot of thrust to weight ratio and all. And of course, you can see how little TWR these nukes have, how slowly they're bringing our orbit down. Okay, that's enough there. So, once we stabilize, I'm looking to expend this nuclear stage, really. We're going a lot faster on this end than we were on the other end. We were going like 1600 on the other end, now we're going 2200. Quite impressive, Tylo's gravity. Okay, well, that that's a good start. We can do a little bit more. Again, for thrust-to-weight reasons, this is not going to be a perfect descent. We're not going to follow the retrograde marker down. We're going to have to lean a little bit higher in order to uh, give our engines time to kill the velocity. So I'll actually want to make this orbit go a little bit further south so that we have the time to burn. Okay, that's the end of the nukes. And now the poodle. I'm gonna extend the solar panels on the probe itself now. Gotta do one goo container here. Oh, uh, we've already done it over in space near Tylo. And we're not gonna recover this. Well, we're certainly keeping closer to retrograde than my previous attempts at this. Actually, I think I've only made one previous attempt at this. Maybe, maybe two. Okay, here we go. Lander stage. Are we supposed to bring this back? Well, no, we don't have parachutes, so we can't be bringing it back. It's just got a lot more than I thought it would. Okay, when is the suicide burn? Uh, I, I don't know exactly what the altitude of the train is, so I don't know when I should be doing a suicide burn. We don't have infinite fuel here, come on. Please tell me that the train is at least a decent altitude. 
otherwise uh, we're gonna take too long to get to the surface and if we take too long to get to get to the surface we're not gonna have the fuel for it okay well, well we have lights on the ground here so we do have down facing lights okay Okay, touchdown! Successful landing on Tylo. Well, that's a thing. Okay. Well, uh, let's observe Mystery Goo here. Well, not as much science as I would have hoped, but let's transmit Tylo's Midlands. Should have figured it'd be Midlands. We're definitely not getting back off this rock. Okay, that's transmitted. Observe Materials Bay. Transmit that data, 36 signs. I believe our contract should be complete. Yes, Explore Tylo is now complete. Okay, and we continue. We've got the Gravioli. We should have logged Gravity Date. Well, I think we probably already have. Uh, I forget whether our previous probe to these locations had all of the instrumentation. But if we did goo container, you know, high probability. Okay, transmit the thermometer reading. Ah, I think I went too quickly on that. Log seismic data, transmit. Seismic data is a lot. Uh, it had the same problem. That size, seismic data really took a lot of electric charge to send, huh? Okay, and finally barometer reading. Nope, can't be done. Uh, typical and hopefully that's fixed in 1.0 they'll allow us to get uh, zero reading anyway so our Tylo lander is successful we got much science we fulfilled the explore Tylo contract now uh, probably we need to take care of our Kerbal that's headed home from Dredz okay the Elu encounter still has 57 days on it I think Kerbin will pass Drez before then. Let's see. And we need a 30 degree angle between Kerbin and Drez. Yeah, that's that's about 30. Okay, let's go to Drez and at least get our Kerbal off the ground. And then we'll see if we can make a transfer. Okay, here we are. Ribbon Kerbin in his extremely hardy Drez lander. I believe we've done all the... Oh, oh uh, we've got... Hmm. Well, let's keep data, I guess. Funny we didn't do everything. Keep data. And, uh, I mean, we planned the flag. We've got stored data. We've got the EVA report and the surface stamp sample, so keep, keep. Uh, crew report. I can't imagine there's a more important crew report, so I'm going to just keep the data. Okay, right. Retracting ladder. And, uh, yep, up we go. Got to be careful about solar panel, uh, our electric charge. We don't have much solar panel. We've just got these guys on the, on these surfaces here. All right, that's a fine orbit. And now we are trying to get back to Kerbin. If we can see Kerbin. There we go. So we need to burn backwards, of course. We're going into a planet further in. So we can burn from periapsis, probably. Well, with the inclination, we definitely need an inclination change as well. Better not miss that. Been missing some of our mid course adjustments recently. Oh wow, that's a thousand right there. I think we're getting into a bit of a pickle here. I'm gonna try and get an encounter that does not involve mid course plane change, but. Okay, well, that's 2000. 
and we have to hit it at the ascending node. You see, my trick is I'm trying to hit Kerbin at the ascending node instead of the Hohmann transfer. So there's a non Hohmann transfer. But since the combination of uh, mid-course plane change and uh, the burnout was 2,500, this is definitely better. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news is that our mass is 8.24 tons, and with the fuel that we have, if we turn off the, the non-essential engines... Wait... Oh no, this just has the LV-99, right, the Tidal Lander had the, had the Rock Max engines. Okay, so we don't have any non-essential engines, and so we just have the LV-99 and its high ISP means that we have 3,000 meters per second of Delta V, so I did plan this mission out properly. Unfortunately, if you take a look at this, because we're only in a 300 meter per second orbit, uh, you look at the maneuver here, and how it's sort of like going straight out, that is a very unusual maneuver to try and burn all of that at once. So we have that flaw going for us here. And of course any adjustment is going to make the whole very touchy sort of approach that I've got with trying to hit Kerbin at the at the ascending node there. That's gonna complicate matters because if we don't do this well. Okay, and besides that, we might crash into Drez if we don't do it well. You can see we're only skimming the surface at 5,000 meters there. Don't think it's particularly safe to burn too early. Let me just do a test burn here. Looks like five and a half minutes. Okay, well, this is pushing it, but let's go here. <laughs> Wait, look, uh, this is how we're burning here. <laughs> This, this might not be the safest thing. But of course, it's not, it's not the way you think it is. It's not like we're actually aiming to crash. We've already got existing momentum. But we are bringing our periapsis down precipitously. Okay, we are on escape. Can we really get this sort of straight out escape that we've got planned here? Might have to take this from the outside view. How does it look? It doesn't look great. Look at this. Oh boy. Okay, I don't feel safe about pointing a Kerbal like that. Come on, let's let's point straight prograde instead. We might already be going a little bit too low. Oh boy. Oh. There's a thing there. That's our flag, isn't it? Bet you that's our flag. What was the surface altitude of the terrain at our flag? It's now very important. Okay, we're going to be going up soon. All right, all right. Uh, the things we do to get home. Okay, okay, we're clear of that situation, but we've now deviated quite a lot from our intended maneuver. I think before burning the rest of this thousand, we should replot. Okay, well, there's a ten tentative maneuver. Actually, costs less than what we had before. Uh, here we go. Okay, it is getting close. Well, let me just burn it out. Okay, let's let's see how close we're getting. And optimize. And that's all we can do from there. Let's wait until we are in interplanetary space and we'll, we'll see if we can adjust this a little bit better. Okay, so Rivden Kerman.
Leaving Drez. Okay, let's say at Apoapsis we wanted to do something. Sounds like a good place. We don't seem to have an ascending or descending node because, well, we're hitting Kerbin at one of them. Uh, I can't make a maneuver here. Yep, it's that thing again. Let me see if we can do some test burns to see what's what. Okay, well that gets us closer. Okay, 1,200 meters. Okay, uh, 120 is all I care to go for from here. We'll bring it in closer in Kerbin SOI in 163 days. All right, Ribbon, Ribbon is definitely on his way into the Kerbin system. Let's leave him for now and turn to our ELU station. All right, here it is, our ELU station, fully nuclear powered, of course. Not that much fuel showing here, but that's probably because of fuel line issues that I've got going. Uh, these these guys aren't connected to this tank, which is connected to the nukes. So I can probably pump the fuel down. Okay, and then these these I'll save for later because I don't think I can fit all of it in that tank. So, yep, at least we've got some of the fuel transferred, and now let's get into Elu Sphere of Influence, such as it is, the tiny little thing. We're going to have another very long burn in order to match up with Elu's orbit. Well, let's see now. Uh, probably a real burn to get closer is not necessarily necessary. Uh, it's not necessary. We are just trying to get into orbit first, and if we burn too close, then our orbit might get a little bit lopsided. Okay, well that's a high orbit, but it's an orbit. Inclined orbit, I don't see any problem with that with ELU. So 1,651 meters per second. And I think we've got the fuel for that easily. There aren't any other requirements. We just need to, we've got a station around Moho contract, but uh, we'll do that after we upgrade to 1.0, I guess. Uh, so all we need to put, do is put it into any old orbit, and this will do. All right, let's do a quick test burn to see how long this is going to take. Looks like eight and a half minutes. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Wow, it's really taking a while to get this thing to loop around, but it's finally bending a bit. Okay. And just a final touch, trying to get it nice and circular, albeit high. Okay, that's that. Let's jump out. And we have to maintain stability for 10 seconds. So holding, auto saving. Ah, it's got it. All right, so how much do we get for that? 500,000 and 720 science. I'm just collecting all the messages, by the way. We've got 86 of them. Probably inflates the size of my save file, but that's about it. Okay, so I uh, hereby declare this. Uh, this will be uh, Shin Okinawa Station. Station. Okay, and that is that. So uh, we only have one piece of business left to take care of, and that's getting Ribden Kerman back home safely. All right, and that's a fitting way to conclude this series of missions. So let's jump to him. Okay, here he is, all excited to get back home, and the trajectory couldn't be more more fortuitous for that, so let's just go ahead. Uh, he's going to actually cut in a little bit before reaching Kerbin. Okay, here we go, cutting in across the orbit of Kerbin in order to speed up and catch up with it.
Okay, here we go. Doesn't particularly matter what orientation we're in, but it does matter what our periapsis is. We can just go ahead and do radial burn in order to fix that. We've still got electric charge. Uh, that's the wrong way. I should have known that. Now I've finally figured out the radial markers. I should just remember that now. I think 25 will bring us down just fine. Or 21. But I want to make it a little bit gentle for him. Well, maybe, maybe uh, getting him down decisively is best. This is not 1.0, so we don't have to worry about re-entry heat or weird aerodynamic effects. So, yep, this is going to be the way we go. And Kerbin is quite a sight now. Unfortunately, we're probably going to come in on the dark side of the planet. Typical for these interplanetary journeys to have that happen. Electric charge depletion because we're in the dark now. I'll have to make sure that doesn't get too excessive. G-forces climbing severely. 7G. 8G. Uh, peaking out at about 8 and a bit there. And going back down. Just worried about mountains now. We're now below the speed of sound. Parachutes out. Okay, it's either lowland or water. It's water. And I'm gonna have SAS on. We can make the touchdown gentle for Ribden. Alright, splash down and recover vessel. Oh wow, okay, so uh, Ribden brought back 445.8 science with him and uh, we got only half of the value of his lander back, but uh, that's 15,800 funds, very expensive lander. Ribden and Kerman got 22 experience, advanced to level 3, and our total tally is 1,831 science now, and uh, 2.7, well, 2.7 million is not enough to upgrade the R&D building. Let's see if we can at least get some sciences unlocked. Uh, no, actually, no we can't. Uh, we really need those funds now. We've got a lot of science. As soon as, basically as soon as we can uh, uh, unlock the R&D building, we'll have enough science to unlock the rest. Though the tech tree, is, of course, has been reconfigured in 1.0, so I'm not too sure how it'll look exactly once we upgrade there. But uh, we'll find out. So I'm going to try the upgrade, and we've done all our missions here. Uh, we, we've got one actually on deck here, the new orbital station around Moho, but we haven't launched that yet. So uh, no problems there. Other than that, our Kerbals... Well, actually, let's check the Astronaut Complex to verify. Okay, Astronaut Complex. Uh, we see zero assigned, uh, ten Kerbals available. And so, yes, none lost in this particular save. We've got a max of 12. So, yeah, uh, Jeb is unfortunately not the most experienced pilot we've got. We've got Erden Kerman and Elliot Kerman and Ribden Kerman all ahead of him thanks to their missions so uh, probably the first thing we need to do in 1.0 is send Jebediah out to to reclaim his title of uh, the best of the best but with that I'll say thank you for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did enjoy this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time